Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the planning committee uh, uh, this evening. Um, before we go into the official uh, business, uh, I just wanted to go through some procedural arrangements. Uh, if you want to speak tonight, please do it in the correct manner, raising your hand. I'll make a note of who's wanting to speak. Uh, when I call you, if you press the button to speak normally, your microphone will turn green instead of red. Um, I will then uh, press a button, especially on my microphone, which will then turn it red, which will allow you to speak. Uh, please do not speak if the microphone in front of you is green, as it will not be picked up by <clears throat> uh, the recording. Uh, I hope that's okay with uh, everyone. Uh, as you remember, on the first meeting of this committee, we had a few issues with people's mics cutting off and people interrupting each other, and I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that we don't have that uh, repeat this evening. Uh, also, before we start, I'd just like to welcome two new members of this committee. Uh, welcome back, Councillor Peter Thurgood and Councillor Ben Price. Uh, and also thank Councillor John Wayne and Councillor Roy Rogers for their service to this committee uh, over the past few months. Uh, their contributions have been valuable, and I'm, and I'm hoping that Councillor Thurgood and Councillor Price will make similar contributions. We're going to start the uh, meeting tonight with apologies for absence. Uh, I have received apologies from Councillor Ben Price. Um, are there any other apologies that people know of? Nope. In that case, we're going to move to uh, agenda item number two, which is minutes of the previous meeting. Is it committee's wish that I sign these as a true and correct record? Proposed by Councillor Goodall. Seconded by Councillor Cooper. Thank you very much. All those in favour? And that is passed. Thank you very much. Uh, item number three uh, is declarations of interest. Uh, at the point, I'm going to hand over to legal representative uh, Jane Cotton just to mention a few things. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, the Chair has asked me um, to give some general advice to members in connection with the uh, second and third applications on the agenda um, because the application uh, applications are made by Councillor Paul Turner um, for uh, development at the Masonic Rooms for an extension and Councillor Turner is both an elected member and a conservative, conservative group member. Um, he's also voluntarily cared in his register of interest, he's a Freemason. And to assist members on whether they need to declare interest, my advice is below. Obviously, if having received the advice you decide you don't you don't need to declare an interest that that's fine and there's no reason for you not there's no bar on you taking part of the decision so it's only if you declare an interest and think that you shouldn't take part then you need to leave the room and not take any part thank you so just to clarify just because the applicant um, uh, is also a member of the conservative group and an elected member this wouldn't automatically mean that other members of this committee who know him and who are also in the Conservative group shouldn't take part. That there's no reason um, why why you sh shouldn't take part on that basis. Um, but you have to consider, as planning committee members, whether you would have an interest in the application. If you do have what you consider to be what's called a close association with Councillor Turner, so a close association goes more than just meeting him at group meetings or day-to-day -day, uh, course of council business as a member. It would be, you'd have a close association if it went beyond that, if your contact with him went beyond that, if you socialised with him on a regular basis, considered him your friend or had other links like business or professional um, dealings with him or memberships of a club, etc. In such circumstances, if you did ha consider you had a close association, you should cons consider carefully whether such association is likely to be seen by members of the public as prejudicing your impartiality or ability to determine the application by Councillor Turner fairly and in the public interest. So if you did think that, um, then you should not take part in the determination of the applications and you should declare a non-pecuniary interest and leave the room when the applications are determined. In addition, if um, any members of the planning committee are, a mem are Masonic members and um, with connections to the lodge 
um, or to um, the lodges that operate from the Masonic rooms, they should also consider carefully whether this connection is also likely to be seen as by members of the public as um, prejudicing their impartiality or ability to determine the applications fairly in the public interest. If members are in that situation and they do consider they want to declare uh, an interest, they should do so and then they should leave the room and not take part in any of the applications. However, it's a decision for each member to make based on your own circumstances. Thank you, Chair. And if members have got any questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to, uh, following the advice, um, declare an interest in 4B and 4C, non-pecuniary interest, that is. Thank you. Hello. I, too, would like to declare an interest, uh, a non-pecuniary interest in, the, um, uh, in those particular applications, due to the fact that I am a member, a proud member, of Marmion Lodge of Tamworth, number 1066. Thank you. Uh, same as Chair, I uh, just need to declare an interest on the two items for B and C. Uh, non pecuniary. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, members, for declaring those interests, and thank you all for pre notifying me of, me, of, me of those so I could get the correct legal advice. Um, and <clears throat> uh, when, the, when we have done the first application, uh, I will invite you to leave the meeting, so technically you've got an early night. Uh, finally, on declarations of interest, uh, if you remember at the meeting held on the 11th of July, I confirmed that under section 33.2 of the Localism Act 2011, uh, that the Act permits an authority to grant a dispensation from either or both of the restrictions not to participate and or vote uh, on a matter in which they have a puny interest. Uh, planning members uh, have received dispensation for applications relating to the future high streets project for a period of two years starting from the 7th of july 2022 uh, and lasting until the 7th of july 2024 um, most members will remember i made that declaration but i have to repeat it every meeting and it's probably new to the the new member here, here tonight uh, so you don't have to declare an interest as being a councillor and have an interest in uh, application 4a this evening uh, any further declarations of interests by members. Fantastic. We're going to move on to uh, applications for consideration. Uh, first one, 0262 stroke 2022, co-op development, uh, co department store, 5 Colhill, Tamworth. Valley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the site is, is on the screen at the moment. Uh, the site's located in the town centre, in the town centre, as I'm sure you're aware, fronting Church Street and College Lane, um, and adjoins St Edith's Square at the front. And as such, it's a very highly prominent position and currently a focal point as the uh, the vacant vacant co-op department store. To the rear is the retained co-op HQ building at Five Coal Hill. That's just indicate it there, if I can. At Five Coal Hill there. Um, <clears throat> and the service access, as proposed, is off Coal Hill, off the existing service yard. Um, it's within the Sound Centre Conservation Area and amongst several listed buildings and heritage assets, which I'll, I'll come on to in the, in the presentation. Um, the next few slides show some of the views. These are actually taken from the Tamworth Council website, so you've probably seen them already, but shows some general views around the site. So this is, this is um, from Coal Hill, so this is the existing HQ building. And then this slide is... Uh, a better illustration of the building to be to be demolished and then the next two slides show <coughs> wider views taken from probably from the from the castle um, and show the the prominence of the church and then St Edith the Square and then you can just see the building here with the white edge and then on this 
this slide, you can see the building there, so you can just get the idea of, of how prominent it is within the, the town centre. So the, uh, the proposals, <clears throat> proposals is a development comprising a new four-storey building on land at the corner of Church Lane and Church Street, College Lane and Church Street, um, and it will replace the previous extension to the co-op, which is which is this area here. Uh, demolition has recently been approved for for that building um, under a, a separate application, and that's uh, been approved earlier in the uh, last month, that was. So the proposal is to provide. Proposal is to provide um, a new location for the South Staffordshire College, the Tamworth Cam Campus, relocating from Croft Street and Upper Gungate, which is about half a mile to the north of the town centre, and then the automotive, automotive construction elements of the Torque Campus, which is uh, about three miles away in uh, Silverlink Road, and relocate them both to one single site, so the college will all operate from one site. Uh, college currently caters for school leavers, adult learners, and offers a range of academic and vocational subjects and full and part-time courses, and also evening classes. And then the talk campus at the moment specialises in practical and professional subjects of the construction sector, so it's bringing those all together. Um, both the buildings, the existing buildings, um, they are ageing and, and don't meet current educational needs, so they limit the flexibility and learning provision and are increasingly difficult and costly to maintain. I'll just go to the next one. So the, the footprint of the proposed building sits on a similar line as the existing building and follows the line of the historic street frontages on Church Street and College Lane. The uh, proposed building has four storeys and it creates a taller building than at present. However, the, the fourth floor is, is set back from the main elevation, so its massing is, is not, it doesn't appear as a full, uh, full storey and it's broken up with uh, pitched north light roofs. I've got some details of that in the elevations. It's a little bit faint on the elevations, I'm afraid, but this, is, this shows the, the uh, roof profile on this line here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the site will also have a, a basement. Obviously, the existing um, co-op building has a basement, so the site will use that area, the lower ground floor, providing space for the, the engineering and construction facilities that need um, a little bit more, more space and more manoeuvrability. Uh, the report is fairly detailed um, and it, uh, excuse me, outlines the uh, consultations and pu publicity that has been carried out. Uh, there's been no objections raised following a, a number of negotiations and information provided and the relevant policies are, are detailed um, in, in full in the report. In terms of the consultations, we've had responses from Conservation Officer, Historic England, uh, Staffs County Council Heritage Environment Team, um, our Policy Team, Economic Development Team, Environmental Health, Highways and Drainage. Um, and all of those have resulted in, in uh, no objections. All their detailed responses are in the report and, and they're written out in full if you uh, so wish to, to go through them. Um, so, so the issues primarily, are the, main, the main considerations include the sensitive historic context of the site in combination with the highly prominent location in Tamworth, the wider context of the planned regeneration of the town centre, so it's within the Future High Streets, gener Future High Streets Fund Regeneration Scheme, which you're, you're aware of, um, and then the opportunities to support the town centre renewal and the opportunity for a building that responds positively and flexibly to changing education needs. The, <clears throat> the principle first, um, the report runs through the policies EC 1, 2 and 3 and relating to appropriate town centre uses and SU 6 regarding community uses and general sustainable policy. So the proposals would comply with, with all of those policies 
and the uh, the general overarching policies SS1 and SS2 of the local plan. Proposal accords with the three overarching objectives of the NPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, and the Tamil Local Plan together, and the need to secure additional vitality and regeneration in town centres in response to the change in economic trends. So the application accords with this approach and, de and delivers uh, sustainable development and will provide positive social, economic and environmental outcomes for the town and the, commu and the community. So it complies with those policies in principle. The, <coughs> the key issues are design and heritage matters. They're somewhat, somewhat interlinked, so I'll, I'll try and deal with them together. Um, just passing through the slides. I'll just leave that one for a minute. Um, yeah, the, the design approach is, is a contemporary reflection of the heritage of Tamworth provides a modern building in, in terms of the flexible working spaces within it, um, but acknowledging and respecting the traditional materials, detailing and form of traditional buildings that characterise the town centre. So it's taken a lot of cues from the existing town centre and the buildings. Um, the a design and access statement was submitted with the application and that sets out all the design principles, the features, layout, materials, precedents and and basically makes a building which offers respect for the past while providing for the future educational needs of the town. The overall approach by the architects has been to design a building that makes a statement, but, that, but at the same time does not overwhelm the historic location of the site. <coughs> the um, college building has been designed so it's both open and secure and can connect the college to St Edith's Square. I'll just go back to the... layout plan so I just get the right plan so that, so this is the the um, ground floor plan and with the access onto the square at this this side sorry I'm just pointing on my screen and I'm not pointing on the laser pointer so here is where I was pointing um, the, the access points are at this this elevation. Uh, so the, the ground floors will be activated along College Lane and Church Street frontages um, with, with public-facing teaching spaces. So there's, there's an outlook onto St Ed of the Square there. Uh, the footprint of the building is similar, on a similar line as the existing building, very similar. It's a very constrained site, as I think shows best in, in this plan so that's that's the existing existing site that's available and uh, it's, it's using that same area <clears throat> um, yeah the, in the south of the, foot, the to the south sorry the footprint will be reduced sl slightly to create some servicing space so the access comes off coal hill here um, and this, this space is actually slightly less than, than existing. So, in terms of elevations, that's probably the easiest one to show you. Um, the, the building, is, the, the proposed building, is slightly taller than at present. This line here shows, obviously, the existing building. Oh, sorry, laser pointer. <laughs> Existing building is here, and then this red line is an outline of, of the proposed new building. So you can see it is slightly taller, but but this area will also be set back. I'll come on to the other slide in a minute that shows that, but you can see it from from this point here where the where the roof line is actually set back, and again on on this slide here, it's set back to to reduce its prominence. Um, and the the ground floor at the front will also be set back, creating a covered area. So that's in this. I'm doing it again. That's in this area, so that you can see that it's 
the actual building it is set back so that the the main building overhangs um, the windows are also set in um, and within the brick skin and with the addition of metal sunshades or fins and these are de design features to create a bit of art articulation and providing a more interesting facade if I go on to the next slide so you've got you've got in front of you I think that there are hard copies been circulated so you should be able to see these um, so so these are the details of um, the elevations um, and as I was talking about the window details and um, the roof being set back uh, the side elevation onto Church Street this this area you can just pick out so um, this is this is creating a sort of regular rhythm of bays and it will create articulation and also gives some reference to the historic streetscape of Church Street um, which was designed to reflect the, the medieval burgage plot layout which was formerly on the site and uh, typical of the historic buildings in the in the town centre uh, they create a rhythmic facade with vertical emphasis which better reflects that historic pattern rather than the horizontal horizontal emphasis of the of the existing building um, I'll, I'll refer to that again a, a little bit further on uh, the the western the western elevation the western end has a more solid um, a more solid rectangular massing that's that's this this block is it's like a separate block of a, a rectangular massing but it's softened but softened by the the inset windows um, the varied roof line um, with it with the roof set back um, and also the undercut ground floor projecting and and the projecting metal shades um, it's, it gives it um, the asymmetrical layout that that again helps to break down the the massing of this range additionally the, the brick used as the main facade material will incorporate panels of textured brick to add interest so that shows it best Oops. Yeah, these these images probably show it best so it shows the the, um, the bricks which has been change to to uh, add texture so it'll be a local Staffordshire brick um, which giving some reference to the history of brick making in the area and two colors a softer red brick for most of the the walling and a darker brown brown and gray brick for the details and cost contrastingly the metal cladding is modern and provides a high quality contemporary material the proposed building will create an active frontage with a cafe area under the covered space to the west, which will engage with St. Ed of the Square. So that's in this area. Um, and there's also a, a salon on the northwest corner of the building. And that will have windows so that people can see the activity within the building and enhance the active frontage and giving a better sense of sense of place and engagement with the um, surrounding setting overall the college will be or the college, proposed college will be a significant catalyst for regeneration of the town center and in in the immediate environment with the refurbishment of st Editha's square which is also due to happen um, and also the added interest at ground level um, Members did see some some uh, draft schemes some months ago, and um, we have engaged with the the architects and the, the agents to provide some some alterations. Effectively, um, the initial submission showed a north elevation with an asymmetrical window pattern and a predominant predominance of brick on the facade. I think that's actually this image which is the, the original one. Um, so the changes that have happened, we've had more information supplied regarding the way in which the bricks will be used, specifically having the two tones to create a pattern and relief that breaks up what was perceived as a monotonous 
facade. So again, that, that shows that brick detail. Uh, windows on the elevations that project into St Editha's Square have been repositioned and some some of them enlarged uh, to to further mitigate the amount of, of brick that um, was caused some some concerns and to provide a more open design to the building and more some more symp sympathetic to uh, St Editha's public space. Um, the the windows are also related to what's to the um, activities of the build, of the spaces behind them so there was there was limited flexibility to be able to, to change too much but certainly um, I think we feel it has addressed the issues that members had in that respect um, we've also had more information on the way in which the light will react with the design of the building and specifically how it will spill into the square when it's dark um, which creates an, an inviting and inclusive feel to the to the design so on all of these images we've got a light and a dark Im image a day and a night image i think on the previous no, not that one. yes on, on those images as well there's 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 day and night time Im images so you can see that um, it will also have an impact at night time uh, changes have also been made to the columns that support the, the sort of overhanging area um, some members were concerned about that, um, but it, it sort of gives the gives more support and it, it gives more substance to to those to that area. The columns were considered to be too thin, and um, it gave a, a bit of an idea that the building was floating, um, which appeared to be incongruent in the street scene. So, that, so that's been redesigned and, and different colour, and give a more robust approach. And then the other, last feature that's that's been added is um, some planting to the top of the building. I don't know if it's on the other one. Yeah, yeah. This on, on this elevation, so there's planters will be will be placed within the um, the roof of the building and overhanging. This also creates some uh, biodiversity net gain and helps to to give a green effect. So, so that's in terms of the designs. We, we certainly feel that um, that this is uh, there have been several improvements, and uh, we feel that it, that it certainly fits with um, the requirements for the building. Um, in terms of heritage, again, the report goes goes through in detail the uh, the policies that that are that we are required to you're required to um, to address. Um, EMV six in the local plan, and also um, the <coughs> excuse me, the conservation policies in the MPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, Chapter sixteen is uh, the relevant the relevant passage that uh, that we need to adhere to. Um, so th that requires it requires the developer to make an assessment of the significance of the application site and its setting. Um, to that effect, the applicants have, have submitted a very detailed heritage statement, um, which goes through all of the history of, of the town and the history of the buildings around and, and the complete setting. So it's, it's a very detailed and, and very informative document. Um, uh, it also looks at the uh, the MPPF gives gives uh, or defines significance as the value of a heritage asset to this and future generations because of its heritage interest and it, it defines heritage values as either well four four assets um, evidential or archaeological archae archaeological um, in this case the existing site has a neutral evidential value um, aesthetic so the department store the design of the department store is of no aesthetic value and then in terms of the public realm there's neutral aesthetic value um, uh, historic, there's low historic is, historic illustrative value or medium historic associative value of this of the site, and the site setting has a has a neutral historic value, and then lastly the communal interest, the communal value of the building is likely to be to be neutral. So it's it's addressed all of those those um, elements that that they are required to by that policy. 
Um, there are, however, buildings of high historic value in the immediate settings, like St Editha's Church, which have very high historic and aesthetic value, and, of course, the, um, the co-op the, the co headquarters, the existing building, is also of high aesthetic value. But overall, the current building, so this is the, the building to be demolished, has a low-rated contribution to the historic fabric. So, um, again, the report goes through what is required in terms of the impact of the proposal upon the heritage assets, and it looks at the impact on the, the Tamworth Conservation Area. Um, I've already mentioned that it retains a reference, the proposal retains a reference to the historic tr street pattern of the town, the roofscape, um, and the design features, including the metal sunshades and the fins. Um, and then there's the, the regular rhythm provides a vertical emphasis to the facade, which better reflects the historic plot pattern. So, so that's, that's um, looking at the impact on the heritage assets there. Um, but also important, there's views are important to consider. So um, that's also been addressed. And I think in some of the photos, sorry, go back. This photo in particular, you can just about see. This is taken from the from the castle, so you can see obviously the church there, and you can just about see the sorry the proposed building, which is outlined there. So it just shows that the impact in terms of views from the castle. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So overall, the, the church will remain the tallest and most predominant feature facing onto the square and within the wider area. And this was an issue further explored with our conservation officer, um, and the and she was concerned about the initially about the the overall impact. But um, having having looked at all the details and, and provided with with heights of the buildings and um, and various additional information, she's quite happy now that uh, that the church will certainly remain the, the predominant uh, building and and that the proposals won't have any adverse impact on it. Um, then the the other issue in relation to heritage was archaeology. Um, that's been addressed in the report and it's recommended that the um, an archaeological watching brief will will be um, in place during the construction works. There is a small historic wall which is next to the, um, the side of the building. I'll go back to where it is. In this position here, so it's at the back of um, of, of the service yard of Cold Hill, and it's at the back of the parish hall which is this building here which is also listed so that's that needs to be um, retained and protected <coughs> so a, con um, a condition is added to that effect um, so in conclusion on the heritage side the proposal would result in the replacement of the modern former department store which is itself a modern addition that has a low rated contribution to the historic fabric. The submitted heritage statement has determined the value of the heritage assets and as a result of this, an understanding of the level of harm has been established, considered to be less than, sub less than substantial, which is a term uh, referenced in the MPPF, and therefore planning consent should only be approved where public benefits can be identified. In this case, a robust justification has been provided and together with the refurbishment of the adjoining locally listed building, the new high quality structure will ensure the long term use of the historic site and in turn both preserve and enhance the town centre conservation area. And the benefits would outweigh any harm identified to heritage assets and therefore accord with the MPPF and policy EN6. So um, the report then goes on to other issues such as highways, and I don't wish to go into too much detail, due to too much detail on that. Um, as you're aware, the, high, the, the site is a highly sustainable location for which no parking is proposed, 
apart from a few spaces at, just at the rear of the building, um, cycle provision is shown at the frontage, but otherwise staff and students are expected to use public transport as much as possible. Um, as a requirement for a travel plan, as explained in, the, in detail in the report, and a payment for monitoring by the County Council is required. This can be covered by a legal agreement, but required to be completed prior to issue of the permission. And then various conditions are also suggested, including a uh, construction management plan and that details all construction aspects in terms of highways. Uh, drainage, we had some, um, some proposals were submitted and we've had further details being required by the local lead flood authority. Um, but again, following, con following consultation with them, um, a condition is now proposed. They're happy with, with the proposal subject to their conditions. Uh, we've also included uh, a section on environmental protection or environmental health requirements, which are conditions to be added to control noise, particularly hours of working, uh, and also including dust and contamination. And this will require submission of further reports and management plans. Um, overall, for, following lengthy consultation and negotiation, this proposal we feel is of outstanding design and quality that responds to its heritage setting and will act as a catalyst for regeneration within Tamworth Town Centre and will set a precedent for future development in high quality design. So overall the recommendation is, is for approval but it's subject to the prior completion of an obligation agreement under section 106 of the Town and Country Planning Act to secure the travel plan monitoring obligation to secure uh, monitoring of the travel plan referred to in the report and then also for you to grant delegated authority to the head of to, to the assistant director sorry <laughs> get your name assistant director of growth and regeneration to conclude negotiations and secure this obligation and approve the application and subject to the conditions as indicated in the report um, one final thing is that you've you've had a, a an additional Additional papers circulated, which just ups, updates those conditions. Condition, uh, condition two. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. There was um, a table of a table of reference to the um, the plans list, and that's been that's been <coughs> updated in that report that you've got. So you've now got a list of those plans which were actually missing from that from the first version, and then. Um, Condition 9 needs to be deleted because that is a, effectively um, a duplication of Condition 10. There were two drainage conditions there which were both very similar. So if you can delete Condition 9 and then finally Condition 18 also needs to be deleted um, because that was a duplication of, of Condition 16 which referred to... Um, uh, cycle storage. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So, therefore, I recommend the application to you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sally. Uh, we do have two speakers uh, on this application this evening, so I'm going to invite them to uh, come forward. I'm going to go from the order that's on my sheet in front of me. Uh, so, Stephen, is it? Fantastic. Um, I think you know the rules. You've got three minutes from whenever you... Uh, Start speaking, um, you will get a notification uh, on the screen that was that, that essentially a little countdown. It will tell you when you've got a minute left, 30 seconds left. Uh, same rules apply for you in terms of the turning on the microphone. So whenever you're ready, turn it on and then I'll approve. Thank you, members, uh, for uh, your careful consideration of these proposals. Um, there are representatives of the, of, of the college uh, and the design team uh, here, here tonight. This is a once-in-a-lifetime uh, opportunity to deliver positive change and secure DFE funding uh, for, for Tamworth, and we really hope that you'll, you'll support us. Member feedback given from the informal session that we had some, some time ago has been invaluable in, in, in trying to improve the design with new glazing uh, wall planters and engage better, better connection uh, with St. Edith's Square. We also found it uh, very helpful to uh, undertake public engagement prior to submitting the application um, to get the views of, of local people which helped shape the design uh, also. 
Um, the proposals uh, deliver four important um, council policy objectives. The first being regeneration and, and delivering uh, new life to, to the town centre, a new footfall um, and, and spend uh, to offset uh, decline in traditional uh, retail and other activities, enhancing the future of students uh, and, and the community through, through a modern state-of-the-art education facility, bringing an important brownfield site back into beneficial use in a key place within the town centre, and delivering a, a bold design that enhances the character and appearance of the conservation area. On that, we, we, we noted uh, comments from, from members uh, previously uh, and uh, reflected on that, uh, but also we have a, a legal obligation to res respect the setting of St. Editha's Church and the conservation area, and hence the design uh, needs to be subordinate to the church and reflect local heritage and materials uh, of the town. But the approach adopted uh, is a contemporary design that is of, of a high quality, and we hope that members will appreciate the, the, the changes that were made subsequent to, to our previous discussion that, that reflect this. And we hope that that then puts uh, both Tamworth College and Tamworth on the map in terms of a contemporary approach to, to, to dealing with sites such as this in, in a heritage context. The application meets uh, the policies of the development plan and, and has the support of the statutory consultees. Um, and in that context, we hope that, that uh, it will uh, bring a major benefit to the local economy at, at the town uh, at a key time when uh, yeah, the economy needs uh, support. Uh, and we commend it to members. I'd just like to hand over to Peter Marsh um, uh, subsequently, if, if that's all right, who's going to uh, mention a little more about design and, and the college. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Stephen. Yes, I've got uh, Peter down as a, a secondary speaker, so if he wants to... Uh take his position and another three minutes will uh, occur again. Um, so yeah, whenever you're ready, uh, it's the centre button on the microphone. Uh, I'll turn it on and then three minutes will start. Sorry, can you just press the centre button of the speak button on your microphone? I'll just turn. Are we okay now? Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Apologies for the tech. The technology phobe here. Um, thank you very much for spending time considering this application today. Together with the college, we've spent the last four years trying to work out what the best future for Tamworth uh, uh, campus as part of South Staffs College would be. And it's really only in the last three years working with the council with the opportunity of the Future High Street Fund that the opportunity of a new building in the town centre has come about. We were delighted to have run the design approach competition just over two and a half years ago to select the architect together with the council, which was a key activity in drawing down the future High Street Fund. And subsequently, we've worked really hard to secure another £11 million from the Department for Education to make this scheme uh, happen. Um, the DfE um, are lovely to work with. They take a long time to make decisions and they give you tight deadlines to meet. Uh, we're working towards completing the building for September 2024 in order to meet the DfE's funding target of December 2024. And with your goodwill and support, we would very much like to be in a place where we can start works on this new building as soon as the demolition works are complete in March 2023. Um, We've got three contractors who we uh, know are ready to, to, to price the works and, and commit to starting on site in, in, in March 2023. Having said all that, I just want to say a few words about the design. Um, and I want to thank committee members for the robust engagement that we've enjoyed with the architects, the design team. Um, I always enjoy working with clients uh, and having robust engagement with architects challenging the process. But I want to echo some of the things that uh, Sally has mentioned in her, in her report. Effectively, we have a, a really quite a tight site. Uh, we're trying to squeeze 6,900 square meters of education space. And the building's formed into three parts. The part that faces Church Street, St. Edifice Square, is largely general purpose classrooms and IT suites. And I think the verticality there is, 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 is a gorgeous reflection of the history. The rear part, the larger scale engineering spaces, uh, I, I think are uncontentious. They're joyful. They have strong connections to the, um, the, the two light walls in the middle of the building. And it's, it's, this, it's the facade on, church, on, on College Lane where we've made the adjustments with a the, with the much stronger glazing, the enhanced glazing, that I think has benefited from the engagement. In that facade, we have hospitality and catering. We have health and social care. We have um, childcare. We have hair and we have beauty therapy. Uh, 
And you can see with those types of activities how we're trying to balance privacy and glazing together. And I think the design team have worked really hard to, to, achieve, to, to achieve that balance. We think it's a really, really strong design and it reflects some of the history of brickwork, including the Flemish brickwork we have on the outside of this building with the small black bricks and the bigger, uh, bigger red bricks imported into that design facade. I've gone over my time by 15 seconds. Thank you for your indulgence, Chair. No, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's always within my power to allow speakers an extra 15 seconds. And uh, as there's only two speakers this evening, I didn't see any reason to interrupt you when you were, it was very obvious you were close to finishing, but if you wouldn't mind turning your microphone off, same button again. Thank you very much. Uh, members, we've heard uh, very detailed and long reports uh, from Sally as well as two speakers. So I'm going to open the floor up uh, to questions uh, from members. Councillor Thurgood. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I've spent many years of my working life in industrial offices, and probably the most depressing thing that I ever felt and was relieved to leave when I did leave the that environment was the sight of looking over I think you've called them steel fins going up and down and to me most of the um, establishments Lucas in in Birmingham Persia in Coventry uh, and others Lucas in Cannock they all have had these um, steel fins so all of those buildings have been taken down because they were, well, they were past their sell-by dates and, and it, the depressing, um, how can I put it, seeing so many people lose their jobs within those steel fins has left some sort of effect on me. So that now I see that and I, I just don't see that that has a relationship with Tamworth other than perhaps the Reliant plant in Two Gates. Um, I guess that's my per well, it's just my personal opinion, but um, the college itself fully support that concept, and uh, I'm sure, um, well, I'm sure other members may have positive thoughts about it. But but that one thing, just as soon as I saw the drawings, um, that hit me. Thank you. Uh, can I what was the question, just so I can direct it to somebody, please? Where the steel fins came from. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Anna, I think you said you wanted to mention take that one in the, in the premier yes. I'll happily bring uh, some clarification in from somebody from uh, one of the architects if they just want to clarify that, please. If you could decide between you who, who, who's. Yeah, please come forward. Can I just clarify? Are we talking about the roof profiles or the or the fins, the, the shading fins on the north elevation? The, uh, those there that... Yeah, you're talking about the north, the, the the sawtooth roof profile. Okay. Uh, basically, we looked at um, Tamworth and its sort of roof profiles around, and you've got a variety of higgledy piggledy roofs in different orientations, different styles, different shapes, different materials. Um, we we wanted to reflect one more uh, hickledy pickledy roof profile, and um, it, the building is in a domestic building, so it didn't seem appropriate to have a small domestic pitch roof on there. So we we've ended up with that that profile, which basically uh, works over top of one classroom, is one is one volume over the top floor classrooms. That's where they came from. Is that okay? Um, thank you, Chair. Could I just add also, um, and looking at the photo top right hand, which is the existing site and the co-op department store, it's got a flat roof, which actually makes that building look incredibly boxy. Um, and I think the, 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 the fins, as, as we're calling them, on the roof in the proposal does provide a little bit more interest and it makes it a lot less boxy and it makes the massing look a lot a lot less significant as well for the height of the building. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Um, same sort of line of questioning, but I think m my line is why the, 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 
the corrugation, why, why metal, why can't it be a, another material? I mean, as soon as I saw them pictures, it just jumped out industrial to me, mm. fa uh, factory. Uh, and I suppose my, it, it's not so much the shape of it, it's the material that's going to be used on it. Uh, Sally, please. Uh, yes, Joe. Um, we we will or <clears throat> we are proposing a condition on the application which um, requires details of materials. So we will we will ask for samples. Usually, ask for samples of the actual proposal, so we'll be able to see exactly what what it is that's being proposed and and make sure it's suitable for the site. Okay. Does that answer you? Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, please. Um, I just, just want to say a little bit about the, the, the top story and the, and the roofscape. Um, I'm not going to apologise about it. I'll, I'll explain, explain why in a moment. From, from the street level, the experience will be of, of observing and passing the, the brick and the windows. Um, the, the, the top story roof level, you're going to have to stand quite some way back to, to, to see because of the setback nature. But these, these are by no means factory style roofs uh, in that two, two key issues. Number one, we've, we have windows in each of the classrooms on the roof to allow clear visibility from those spaces out across the town. And of course, some of those spaces on the west facade will enjoy fabulous views out in this direction towards the castle. So hopefully far less depressing than being, being in, in, in the enclosed factory, but I, that's, that's just my, my own impression. The second thing is, is what, what, what is the material here? We're looking at a powder-coated steel. So this, this, the colour that's being shown here, is it a copper, is it a bronze? We will have to provide sample materials for the council to review and consider and approve. I don't think that copper and bronze is anything like the sort of material and the darkness that you would have, you would have seen in a factory, but I do understand that the sort of north, north light comparison between the two. But we've worked really hard to avoid a, a rather boring and flat roof here, but to create a roof that reflects some of the history of the town and a bit of joy and excitement. Um, and I think the fact, the fact that these questions are being asked about the roof demonstrates that it is a bit different and a bit interesting, but very hopefully in a positive manner rather than a, rather than a depressing manner. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Claymore? I'll come back to you afterwards, Peter. Councillor Claymore. I think, I think the gentleman's just more or less answered what I was going to ask. And I was just going to ask if, if the original look of the steel the, the fins, um, is it going to be in a material that will age over time and change with colour or? Uh, Councillor Clem, I've just had a brief chat with the Assistant Director. We can get uh, speak to the architects and get samples of these and make sure committee members have the option to see them. Um, obviously, this will be after the determination of the application, but we will be able to see them prior to them being... Discharged. Yeah, discharged if approved. Uh, but you wanted to come back in, uh, so yeah, please do, and then Councillor Thurgood is next. Yeah, if it assists, I believe that when we looked at these plans initially, that was all brick at the top, or most of it was brick. And I think the comments were made about we didn't want to look at just a brick wall, um, like we've got some of the other buildings here. Um, I don't have any, any problem with the, the metal fins. Um, and I do support this application um, because I do believe it will give regeneration to the town and it offers um, a much better solution, I believe, for the young people of this town to learn their skills. 
Thank you, Councillor Claymore. Uh, in the original ones that we did see at the um, the informal session we held, I think it was after the August meeting or the the July the July meeting. Um, the, there were aspects of the roof that uh, had the um, uh, powdered steel, I think is the phrase that's been used, uh, the one there. So yeah, the, the, that bit hasn't changed that, that dramatically. Uh, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, could we just clarify which bits are actually the, the um, powder coated steel? Are they the, the front elevation that we're looking at? Uh, Councillor uh, Thurgood, can I, have you, got, have you got one of the presentation packs? I'm sorry, beg your pardon? Uh, have you got one of the presentation packs in yeah, front of you? Uh, can I get you to turn to page 11? Uh, the bottom two images do give a, uh, what I think is a quite a clear indication of uh, the uh, the areas that will be uh, covered in it. It's made the, the, the top bit, but I will bring Sally in just to clarify. Oh, that. That rather than those. Both. Yeah. Um, again, very industrial in, in, in sort of in the steel um, uh, facing, but do you know what? If it were a copper, something which I think was said could age, it would be a tribute to industrial heritage, bearing in mind that the college is also doing a lot of industrial um, training, if that makes sense. Um, as it ages, to me, it would look really, really nice. Um, but in, in a stark um, steel um, powder coated grey or whatever, it, it just would not far up within me any enthusiasm. But copper, um, you do see, I mean, in Austria, you see a lot of copper roofs. And when they're put on initially, um, they're bright, um, well, copper. But uh, over a year or two, they tone down to a, the most wonderful. Um, pleasing sort of um, tone, yeah. So that's my four pennyworth, <laughs> which I'm allowed to, to offer. Oh, thank you, Chair. I think perhaps to resolve this um, and perhaps, perhaps then move on in the debate, I think if approved, um, obviously materials are conditioned, um, a discharge of condition application would be submitted. Um, if it's helpful, we could bring samples to committee just for an informal chat. It, you know, it, it doesn't need a report and all, all, this, all the other fanfare that goes with it. But I think if someone from the applicant side would like to come and share those samples and talk through them and get a decision that way, um, if that's helpful, I think that would be quite a useful thing to achieve from, from this discussion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. I've seen nods from uh, members uh, and also nods from uh, uh, the, the speakers this evening. So um, um, this is indeed a recommendation, but it's something that will happen um, if this application is approved this, this evening. Uh, Councillor Harper, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, we've... Um, We've had a look at this before, and um, uh, it's been really very interesting to see the changes that you've made to the building, and particularly um, to the western facade. My own personal view is I can I can live very well with the the central section. I love the vertical emphasis that you've employed. I think that's absolutely perfect. And I think it works very well, and I think it will look terrific. The problem I've got, though, is the western facade. Um, I don't know if we could put on the next slide or the the one that that's the one. That's the one I think. Uh, can you add, can you tell me was the original intention um, this? Is it the fifth floor, uh, right at the top, where it looks like a ship is coming into dock uh, at the back? Of, uh, was the original intention to have that on the corner of the uh, of the building, and you pushed it back to um, to create less of an impact on the church? Is that what's what has happened? Uh, yes, if you want, mind giving a very quick uh, answer to that, please. Yeah. Um, the it. 
the original intention wasn't to have it set forward, um, as, uh, but, but you're right as to the reason why it's set, set back, which is essentially to maintain a, a, a clean uh, parapet line um, that, that conforms to the, to, to, if you like, the parapet line as you look up College Lane towards St. Edith's Church. Um, so, so in that view, you, you, you see the, the parapet uh, line of the buildings, you don't get the, the fourth floor um, roof form in, in that view. And that's deliberately to, to ensure that St. Edith's Church remains the dominant uh, building within within that view. It also means that that by setting that um, uh, top floor back, each of the classroom spaces uh, within that have a, a, a view out um, to, to the west that is that is set set back, and they've got that element of of, of roof space, which has now got the planters uh, and what have you on that have the trailing plants that come down the, the, the edge. So, in a sense, that that latter bit is in addition to. To, in, in response to, to, to the member uh, dialogue that we had uh, previously, but the original design would have set that, that, that top floor back in any event uh, for heritage reasons, essentially. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my own personal view on that is that I personally would much rather have that uh, set back corner, if you like, uh, been brought forward. Um, the reason for that is that we're essentially on the Western facade we're looking at a rectangular brick box supported by three legs. Um, it's got a it's a flat roof, rectangular fl uh, box brick box, with windows punched out at various points. Not specifically for the external, or from my point of view, not from the external point. They're there for to service whatever room is behind them. Uh, we're here as, as a committee. This is such an important building. Uh, first and foremost, uh, before I, I, I go, may I just say that we're delighted, thrilled that the college is coming into town. It's the most fantastic uh, thing for the town. And we're, well, we're looking forward to the future enormously with having this brilliant uh, facility. John, can I encourage you to save uh, a lot of this for the debate section? We're still in questions. I can. I certainly can. <laughs> uh, but have you got a question? But uh, yes, I was uh, going on to mention the, the facade, which is my question. The window arrangement I find very eccentric and not very appealing. Uh, be, presumably this is because you put the windows in to service the rooms behind. Most architects, I know these days, you build buildings from the inside out. Um, but we're, as a committee here, we're worried about the impact this will have on people who aren't inside, on the townsfolk who see it every day, who walk past it every day. And this will going to be here, hopefully, long after we've all departed this, uh, this life. And what we're looking for is a piece of heritage for the future that people in the future will regard with pride and great, um, well, an inspirational building that, will, that they'll be really desperate to hang on to and look after. Um, the flat top does nothing to me. That's 1960s, 1970s, awful. On the, uh, on the particular drawings you've got here, you've, um, you've dressed it up with a bit of uh, ivy, uh, cascading over the walls there to try and soften that, uh, that ghastly flat roof. But um, the problem I've got is the window arrangements, which symmetry is something that human beings love, adore. Most through the ages, I think, you look through the, around this room, everything is symmetrical. The window arrangements, there is no symmetry on this building which makes people feel uncomfortable. They don't, it's just bits and bobs. If you look at the particular building on the, on the right, the silhouettes, it looks a bit of a hodgepodge, doesn't it, of, uh, of, of, of buildings. So from my point of view, um, I wonder, would it be possible to get some sort of symmetry that would, that would certainly inspire me and make me feel more comfortable with it? Is that a possibility? I wonder if someone can... Uh, Councillor Harper, not tonight. It, it, it isn't. We are judging the application that is in front of us uh, and not one that uh, we're amending to 
uh, members' uh, design preferences. So that would, that, would, that would be a no. We are judging the application based on the evidence we have got in front of us in the report and the presentation back this evening. Um, thank you, Chair. I was, I was asking if it's possible, um, which is a question. Is that not not acceptable? Bring in the assistant director. No, I'm going to bring in Sally and then the assistant director. Uh, yes, Chair. Just just to say, it is it's really in relation to the um, the internal arrangement. Uh, we've got some slides of the internals here, um, and and how that how that works within the building. So the 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 windows externally are all related to the functions inside. So it, it certainly has been amended from previously um, in, in light of comments that were made uh, by members. Um, and and this, is, this is really a, the limit of what can be achieved. It does allow some symmetry, certainly, um, although obviously they're not all the same windows, but it's, it's kept a sort of vertical alignment and it's kept a horizontal al alignment so that those, those lines follow through. But to be absolutely symmetrical, the, the internal arrangement just wouldn't allow that. Thank you. Yes, that's what I suspected. Um, certainly some of the additions that you, I know you put some extra windows in to get more light into the building, which is very laudable and, and we want more light in the building, surely, and m more views out. The uh, particularly the, the high window on the left, I think, is an absolute triumph. I think that really works well, and it looks good, and um, I think that sets the building off a treat. Um, it's just the symmetrical pieces of the others that worry me, but I will leave that to another time. I think because I'm getting stares from over yonder. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to reiterate Sally's point, and I think it was made also by the applicant team, that the, the fenestration and its arrangement is based upon the activity that sits behind it. Some changes have already been made and amendments made to the design of that, that western facade in between the member informal member comments that we had two months ago and now, and the changes that could be made have already been made, and I don't think the design can go any further than that uh, whilst retaining sort of the functional space and activity behind it. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, I've just overruled everybody because I had two people. I've got Martin, then I'll come back to you, John. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just um, wondering if we can have with the indulgence of, uh, I think, the, the architects. Um, an overview of the uh, the green credentials of the building, its energy usage, um, and you know things like solar panels, anything like that that are being uh, other than the ivy. What other green credentials does the actual building have? If I could uh, have indulgence on that, chair. Uh, that would be acceptable in my mind. I'm just going to go to Councillor Harper first for his question, while the architects have a, a chat before themselves, and then I'm going to give them a minute, minute and a half to out outline those. Okay. So, Councillor Harper, please come in. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I am, I am <laughs> to be heard. Um, yeah, um, we've, I think we've got to congratulate you on the, the enormous hard work that you've put into this project and the amount of detail that you've given to us and um, the... <sighs> The effort that has gone into this from everyone, from college um, administrators to yourselves, and um, we all appreciate that. And I hope you don't regard anything that we say uh, as detrimental. We're just all trying to get the very, very best for Tamworth, because um, that's what we're here for. And we owe it to future generations to get this absolutely right. Um, the We've mentioned that it's no, it's not a, a competing with the, the church, which I'm very, I agree with. I don't think it is, um, but this is an iconic building in its own right. So it should have, it should be solid. It should have its own inspirational feel about it. The the church is um, is 
uh, a place of spirituality. This is a cathedral of learning. We should be celebrating this and inspiring people to come into these doors and learn and see what's going on. The only problem I've got is that this Western facade lets it down. Um, I find that that's, of course, everything is subjective. We'll have our own different views and whatever. But I'm sure that a lot of Tamil people, and I, I, I know them reasonably well, um, will think it's, a, it's an opportunity missed, an opportunity to give Tamworth something that we can be so, so proud of. And um, you have got the capabilities, you've got the skills, you've got the, the mindset to do this. And I think, from my point of view, uh, this Western facade is a big problem that I think um, you could have done better on that, basically. Uh, although I do applaud the um, improvements that you have made. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Anna, please come in, and then I'm going to invite one of the architects just to speak about the green differentials of the building, and then I'm proposing we move to the debate uh, from this one. As I, several members this evening, uh, it, the, the border is very fine, and I quite I allow people to do it, but the, the border is very close to being crossed in the terms of between question and debate, uh, and I think we need to move uh, to getting a resolution to this. So, Anna, please. I actually have a question for members, and I know normally you're firing questions at us during this session, but I've got one back. Just, um, I'm, I would be interested to know, because we've had quite a lot of discussion with the architects and their team, whether you like the green fringe across the top of the building, because we've put it in, but we were unsure, actually, if that's something that you would be, I don't know, pleased with in design terms. So, some feedback on that, I think, would be really useful. Thank you. Am I on? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Um, I really like it. I think it softens the building. I guess um, I guess it looks perfect on the picture. Um, it'd be interesting to see what it's like uh, right at the beginning and then in 10 years' time and whether the, it's well-maintained and uh, um, doesn't just go everywhere. But I like it in general. Councillor Summers. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you look at buildings in Singapore and you think, wow, don't they look amazing with all the greenery over them? Um, so I say more of that kind of thing, to be quite honest. Um, you know, if we could cover the whole building in, in uh, you know, in Singapore style flowers and plants and whatnot, that even the better. Um, yeah, I think it's great. And I hope it maintain it uh, actually makes the final cousin. Councillor Harper. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm afraid I disagree. <laughs> I would much rather see a fantastic, beautifully designed, gorgeous building than have it covered up with foliage. Um, that's my, my view on that. Um, it's not Wimbledon, and uh, I don't think that that's the right place for foliage. Uh, Councillor Claymore. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, I can only echo Councillor Summers and Councillor Goodall. Um, I think it looks really lovely. Um, we need more greenery in the town centre. Um, my only, only concern would be that it is properly maintained because it could look rather shabby if it isn't. But I think it looks really nice. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say that the greenery isn't there to mitigate poor design. Um, it was there to address member comments from a few months ago, which was actually the sort of the dominance or propensity of brick. Um, and so a number of design changes were made, including the windows and the greenery. So that, that, was, that was the reason for it. Thank you. Does any other member got any comments on, uh, from Anna's question regarding the greenery? Councillor Thurgood. Uh, for what it's worth, I think it looks quite nice. Um, so long as we don't get to the situation like the charity shop behind us here, where you've got trees growing out of the guttering. <laughs> but otherwise, fantastic. Thank you. Last opportunity for members. I don't know if that was a hand from Councillor Murray. Okay. Uh, no, uh, thank you. Um, 
I'm going to move out to, uh, if someone just, just want to address the green concerns uh, very, very briefly, please. Um, and then we will move on. Ah, on yeah. now, okay. So in terms of environmental performance, the building has been designed to be net zero in operation. The only gas that we're bringing into the building is for the hospitality and catering training aspect. Everything else in the building, air source heat pump, fully electric uh, heating and ventilation. So zero carbon in operation. The uh, insulation is way beyond current building regulations. Um, so this, this is a significant, significantly sustainable building. And in addition, this building at being just under 7,000 square meters is a substantial reduction in the footprint of the existing college site, which is you know, of a variety of different ages. So it's a much, much smaller college means we're, we're heating a much smaller space and the space that's being built is, is a far better insulated space. And all of the, all the power that's going into the building is, is electrical. So it should be in due course fully fully heated and cooled from through renew, renewable energies if i can get that word out, out of my mouth other aspects of the building it's the, the, the concrete frame adds cool um, it keeps the building cooler in the summer and keeps it warmer in the winter so there's a full full range of of, of, of uh, environmental strategies as, as documented um, in the design access statement if i can just in beg your indulgence on that western facade which you've described as slightly boxy uh, with the beautiful Oriel window, which I think we all agree is a fabulous feature, I can promise you that we will deliver a quality of that facade with the brickwork that would make it the bex best box in Staffordshire. Okay. Uh, no, thank you very much for that. Um, Councillor Summers, uh, I was incredibly impressed with the, with the, the green credentials, and I hope you are as well, and I hope all the members are, are relatively satisfied uh, uh, with that, so we, with that, we are going to move on to debate. Councillor Goodall, you've indicated to me that you wish to kick off. Uh, Councillor Harper, yes. Just one very, very, quick, uh, very quick point, if I may. Um, with reference to the to the roof, um, is there no? Um, does it not have to have a rail around the roof level? Uh, I know at Marmion House they had to put up a, a, a hideous rail around the top of any flat roof building. So the, the brick is a metre higher than that. Thank you. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Goodall, please start. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, yeah. We've, I mean, we've heard a few things about the, the picture of design. I'm, I actually like the design of the, uh, of the whole building. I think in the past, and Councillor Thurgood has mentioned the industrial style buildings that had that design which i think was to bring in more light and and things like that but um there's no confusion that this building is some sort of industrial building i think it's i think it's really good um and where are we we're, we're bringing the college right into the uh into the town center and that can only be a a benefit to the town and to the college um i'm Totally happy to support the uh, the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Goodall. Does anybody else wish to join in with the bank, Councillor uh, Smith? I'm so sorry, I nearly forgot your name then. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I I think actually there's um, a lot of improvement since the last time uh, that we looked at this. So uh, thank you for that. Um, the only thing I was going to say really, other than the, I was, I did have some concerns about the greenery on the top, about the maintenance of that, but I think that that's been answered. Um, the only thing I was going to say was on the actual name, South Staffordshire College, um, on the daylight uh, picture, it does seem a little bit uh, not particularly visible, so I would just say maybe just take that into consideration that it needs to obviously stand out. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Anybody else? Councillor Summers. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, um, it's um, it's an exciting time uh, for the town centre, and uh, I can only uh, support it. It's a uh, it's a bright future for the, for a rather dismal site at the moment. 
which will hopefully provide a bright future for our students. Um, nice sound bite there. Um, <laughs> so, um, Chair, with that, I think we've heard enough, and I'm happy to move the proposals um, subject to the conditions in the uh, in the report. I uh, just wanted to clarify, Councillor Summers, you're moving them uh, subject to the conditions outlined in the report. And, and yeah, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, and the additional ones that uh, Sally mentioned with the removal of uh, 9 uh, and 18, and the table being completed in uh, 2. Correct. And subject to the, the, the securement, uh, the, the agreement of the section uh, 106. Yes. Uh, I had a Councillor Harper. Uh, who wanted to come in? Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, one point that I'm, I meant to bring up earlier, and um, it slipped my mind because we were concentrating on the western facade, is the cellar or the former swimming pool, which is beneath the site, um, which was um, part of the building that stood here originally. Um, Reverend William McGregor's Baths and Institute, there is still part of the baths in existence in the cellar. Um, I haven't seen it. I, I did want to go down there, but we weren't able to do it at the time. And um, I'm not sure how much of that exists, but what, it, what does exist is that incorporated into the scheme and... Uh, Councillor Harp's not... Questions it's anymore. Not, it's not. Uh, but I'll Can be, I, I'm going to encourage you to keep going on your debate, otherwise I'll you're re, not going to be allowed to speak it, again. I'll rephrase it, Chair. I would hope that um, you are going to be incorporating elements of that into the um, current scheme and not simply destroying something that could be of great benefit to um, the. Uh, to the uh, and, 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 and give great architectural interest. Um, um, the green tiles and so forth, which I understand are still there, but um, I hope you'll be looking at that when you do demolish it and taking due care that if it can be incorporated into the scheme, it will be. Um, thank you. Councillor Harper, I'm going to encourage you, as this is your one opportunity to speak during debate, to, if you have additional things to say, please continue speaking uh, at, at the moment. If not, I'm not going to be allowed to call back on you again. Mr. Chair, thank you. I will take your words of wisdom. Thank you. Oh, no, uh, thank you. I, um, no, uh, I think I've just got uh, Councillor Cooper who wants a second, uh, and then I'm going to come to Councillor Claymore. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'll just keep it short and sweet. Uh, thank you for listening to us uh, the last time we were here. That's great uh, that you've, you've took it on board. It's brilliant. Um, I like the design. I like the, uh, the amendments. Um, and uh, I look forward to the uh, the benefits, the socio-economic benefits that this is going to bring to the town centre. So thank you for uh, designing something that the uh, people of Tamworth can be proud of. Thank you. Um, and with that, I'd like to second this. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor uh, uh, Cooper. Councillor Claymore. Councillor Cooper stole my thunder. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, has anybody, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak on this item? Uh, in that case, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, the recommendation is approval subject to conditions below and the uh, additional ones highlighted uh, by Sally uh, and, great, uh, and grant delegated authority to the Assistant Director of Growth and Regeneration to conclude negotiations on and complete an agreement under Section 106 of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990, so to secure the planning obligations outlined in the report. All those in favour of the application being approved? All those against? That uh, application is approved. Uh, at this point, um, I'm going to invite those who did declare an interest in uh, the second two applications, 4B and 4C, to leave the meeting. Um, we have five minutes to do a swap. Yes, we also need to swap over laptops uh, and people sitting. So, Jody, Adam, can we pause the meeting for five minutes, please? 
um, just so uh, we can allow people to change over, people to leave.
Uh, welcome back, everybody, uh, and thank you for your patience during that uh, uh, short uh, turnaround. Uh, we're going to go on to the second of the applications for us uh, to consider this evening, and that is 0308-2022, stroke uh, application for the Masonic Rooms. Oh, what happened to Debbie? Thank you, Chair. Uh, evening, councillors. Um, today I'm presenting two applications for the Masonic Rooms or 29 Litchfield Street, which is uh, just down the road from Marmion House heading out of town. Um, it's the end of a row of terrace properties um, and there's a, a mix of uses around the site, um, including residential and retail and offices. Um, so the first application is 0308 um, 2022. Um, this is the, the full application for the extension. Um, it's a single story extension um, that's, it's, yep, oh sorry, apologies, that's the site there. Um, and you can also see it in your booklets as well. Um, it's um, a single story extension. It's called a side and rear extension. Um, if, oh, I have not the slide. Uh, because it's kind of on the corner of the building, so it's sort of at the back of, uh, at the back of some bits of the building and to the side of other bits of the building. It's kind of filling in the corner. Um, so that's why. So it's a side and rear extension, and the um, the applicants looking for for to have this extension for storage, um, storing uh, furniture and equipment for meetings and events that are held at the Masonic Rooms. Um, this application has been brought to committee because the applicant is a councillor. Uh, it would have, otherwise, it would have been something that would have been dealt with um, as a delegated um, decision. Uh, the extension itself is 2 metres by 4.5 metres, and 3.4 metres tall with a flat roof. Um, so you, you can see the extension on these, that's the elevations and the, uh, and the floor pan. And in that bottom left hand corner I think is a section, just in case that was confusing anybody. Um, yeah, section. Um, but so it's, 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 the, it's the sort of the pink bits in the corner of the building shown on that slide. Um, so relevant policies for this application, um, there's obviously the policies contained in the MPPF, um, EN5, design of new development, and EN6, protecting the historic environment. Um, I won't talk too much about EN6, um, I'll save that for the, for the next application, which is the list of building consent. Um, <coughs> The consultees, we consulted environmental protection and we consulted the conservation officer um, who both submitted comments in response to that consultation. We also had comments from Staffordshire Fire and Rescue. We didn't actually consult them, but they like to keep an eye on us, so they, uh, they submitted some comments. And there was also a site notice um, posted and an advert in the paper. Um, so moving to the issues, um, the development is, um, is acceptable in principle, it's within a built up area, um, the building itself is a listed building and it's also within the town centre conservation area. <coughs> the extension will be quite, will, will be relatively tucked away um, with li limited visibility from outside of the site. Um, its, its design is in keeping with the existing 1980s extension with matching finish and flat roof to the same height. Uh, with regards to EN6, protecting the high historic environment, um, we don't see that there's any issues. Um, although, as I say, I'll, I'll expand a little bit more on this with the list of building consent. Um, its site is in a conservation, conservation area with numerous other listed buildings around including its immediate neighbour. Um, but the conserva conservation officer was consulted and is happy with the impact on the heritage assets in the area. 
As far as neighbour amenity is concerned, there's no overlooking or overshadowing as it's single storey with established boundaries. And the environmental protection asked for um, environmental protection asked for conditions with regards to hours of work during construction because of the um, residential properties around, um, as I spoke about before. Um, as far as highway issues, um, the, the extensions at the rear, so there's, there's not really any issues in terms of visibility displays or anything like that. And the only real sort of potential issue is parking, but um, there's, there isn't going to be any loss of parking. And because the extension is really just for, for storage, you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily see an increase in demand for parking, particularly so. And, and um, so we didn't see that there was any highway safety um, concerns. Environment, as far as contaminated land is concerned, it is in a buffer zone for a known historic landfill site. So we've had to add a condition um, uh, to, to address that. Um, so in conclusion, it's, it's a single storey rear slash side extension. That there was no real issues with design or the neighbour amenity or parking uh, uh, or contaminated land that can't be addressed with the use of a condition. Um, so... Uh, with regards to the condition, there is a little a bit of an omission which um, the conservation officer had asked for a construction methodology. So that's something that needs to be added in um, as a condition. But other than that, I, um, we're looking to recommend approval um, subject to those conditions. Uh, thank thank you. you very much uh, for detailing... Um, the full application for us before we move on to the listed building uh, application at uh, C. Uh, there are no speakers on this item. I'm going to invite any members who have any questions to ask them. Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, presumably, we're talking about the, well, not presumably, we are talking about the 1980s um, previous, sorry, the existing building, and we're basically squaring off the lines back to the building. Um, do we know whether the reason they're doing that, um, just out of interest, um, is to increase the size of the, um, the hall at the side? Presumably that gives them a much nicer uh, space to hold their functions. Thank you, Chair. The details submitted um, with this application state that it's for storage of equipment and furniture. That's as much as I know, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, just whether the, the storage rooms that they're moving out of into the new ones when they're built leaves a void, which are they planning on changing the structure of the building to actually, I don't know, put a lintel in to actually make the, um, the, the, the um, function room larger? They're not showing anything on the plans to suggest that. Uh, I, um, as Councillor Turner is a colleague of all of ours, um, potentially that question could be asked to him outside of the room. Uh, any other questions from members? Okay, then uh, we'll move into debate, and I'm going to immediately kick off with uh, moving this recommendation approved subject to the conditions as well as the additional uh, condition, which would be uh, number five uh, for the construction methodology uh, as outlined uh, by Debbie. I'd hope for a seconder. Councillor Cooper, do you wish to speak on the item? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Reserve the right. Any member wish to join debate? In that case, we're going to go straight to the vote. It's been moved and uh, seconded. All those in favour of approval? Thank you very much. That is everybody. Seven. Uh, we're going to move straight on to uh, 4C in the applications for consideration. Uh, 0309-2022, Masonic Rooms, LBC. Back to you, Debbie. Thank you, Chair. Um, so now I'd like to talk to you about the listed building consent 0309 2022. 
I'll not um, go over the de get details of the application again, but I'm happy to clarify any matters if required. I'll just try to focus on any additional points um, relevant to the list of building consent. So <clears throat> just to start with, to set, uh, just uh, to explain, list of building consent is required if an owner wants to alter or extend a list of building in a way that affects its character or appearance as a building of special architectural or historic interest. This means that work that perhaps on a, a, a building that's not listed would, would not require planning permission, such as just replacing some windows, would, would still need listed building consent. Um, in this instant, the instance, the extension does require full planning permission, hence the application that we've just previously discussed. So this application needs both full and listed building consent. Um, so the Masonic Rooms is a, is a grade two listed building. The front three storey section is a early 19th century with a larger story, um, a larger rear extension being built in the 1950s and a smaller single storey extension in the 1980s. Um, the key policy relevant to the listed building consent is EN6. Um, protecting the historic environment, um, which states that development that affects a listed building will require a heritage statement, which assesses the impact of the development on the listed building, demonstrates how the significance, including its setting, will be protected, conserved, and where possible, enhanced. Um, we consider the extension won't enhance, but it will conserve the listed building, and therefore meets this policy requirement. The MPPF paragraph 202 states that where development proposals will lead to less than substantial harm to the significance of a designated heritage asset, this harm should be weighed against the public benefit of the proposal, including, where appropriate, securing its optimum viable use. Um, now, a submission as um, includes the submission includes a heritage statement which states that the extension is required for the storage of equipment and furniture. And then this will ensure the long-term occupation and maintenance of the building. Uh, we have taken the view that the impacts of the proposal are modest and reasonable given the need for additional storage required for the functioning of the building. Again, the conservation officer has been consulted on this application and she has stated that there is less than st substantial harm and she's got no objections subject to the inclusion of conditions with regards to the materials and again the construction methodology. So, in conclusion, it's a listed building consent for the Masonic Rooms. Um, it's an extension which causes less than substantial harm, which is justified by the needs of the current occupant. Um, therefore, I would look to recommend... Uh, we are rec recommending approval um, subject to the conditions. Again, we need to put the construction methodology in that's been missed. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much uh, for that. Um, again, no speakers on the item, so I'll go straight over to member questions. Oh, yeah, Councillor Claymore. Thank you, Chair. My hearing isn't that brilliant. Could you just confirm that you just said that the one conclusion will be the methodology of the building material? Um, yeah, um, we would include the, the the conservation officer said that she wanted this um, she wanted a construction methodology because she wants to make sure that however they build it it doesn't damage the fabric of the historic building. So I guess like how you attach it, um, that, that's that's what it's about. Sort of making sure that the way they build it is 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 sensitive to to the the heritage asset. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Fine. Uh, any other questions from members? Move on to debate. Again, I will happily move the recommendation that we uh, approve this ap uh, application subject to the conditions as well as the additional condition which would be four regarding the construction methodology. Look for a seconder. Councillor Goodall, do you wish to speak? Happy to second, Chair. Thank you. Anybody wish to contribute to discussion on this go to a vote all those in favor of approval 
Uh, 97 out of 7 again. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, for officers uh, attending this evening. Very much appreciated. Uh, thank you for the people who have helped set all the video up, etc. Uh, very again, very much appreciated. Uh, next meeting's in November, so hopefully see you then. Bye bye.